So we're about 13 days into the fast, and I know sometimes this season is really, it's distracting because of like Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's, there's so many things that our minds are concerned with, that it's really important that we kind of push ourselves and forge ourselves to, to get into the fast, and, and I believe that this gospel is setting for us the tone that, that the church is setting for us that we would, that the church would hope that we would be able to set our minds and our hearts in the right like frame of mind. You have this rich young ruler who came to the Lord and said, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? And then Christ says, You know the commandments? Do the commandments. And he had a very superficial understanding of what it meant to fulfill the commandments. He says, I do all these things. I honor my father. I don't defraud anyone. I, I don't steal. I don't kill. I don't lie. I don't do any of that stuff. I'm good. What's next? Very simple approach. Like, okay, I'm perfect. Let's go. Like, what's the next step? And Let's get the show on the road. And he's coming before Christ, and Christ sees that his heart is in the right place, but his perception is skewed. His standards are kind of very shallow and superficial. And so Christ looks at him, and he looks at him with a heart of compassion. And he knows what is in the heart. And I want each and every one of us to ask ourselves, do we have a superficial understanding of God's requirement for us? Is our understanding a mature understanding of what God desires of us? God looks and He says, fine, I'm going to take you at your word. You obey all the commandments and you obey them perfectly. Even though every Jew knows very well that obeying the law was very difficult. The Jews had tons of laws and tons of rituals that had to be performed. It was very difficult. So for him to say that I've completed these things, very superficial. And Christ takes him and says, okay, I'll give you that. Last thing, go, sell your possessions, give to the poor, take up your cross and follow me. Last simple thing. And the man looks it's too hard for him. And he goes away sad. What was Christ doing? Like he asked us to obey the commandments. I obey the commandments. He says it's not about some external, like external works that we do on the outside. But what I want to get to is the heart. And what's going to get you saved and what's going to give you eternal life is basically what's in the heart. And what's in your heart are your riches. Are your possessions. And he says, okay, fine. Last thing. Something very simple. You obey all the commandments. You did the hard part. The simple thing is just give up your possessions. He can't do it. And he goes away sad. And I look to this person, and sometimes it's easy to judge him. It's easy to look at him and say, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But I think, for the most part, maybe he is faithful in the commandments. Maybe he does everything good. But Christ is saying, doing everything good isn't going to get you saved. Where is your heart? What is in your heart is what's going to determine whether you have eternal life or not. And he realized that there was something in his heart that he loved more than God. And I think for many of us, I don't know if we can say that we do what he does, but we can say... Like, we're good people, we come to church, we're, we're doing what's asked of us. If Christ today were to look to you and say, okay, you're a good person, you go to first liturgy, and you're an overachiever too, you wake up early, and you're fasting the fast, and you read your Bible, and you do, you obey all the commandments, good. If Christ today were to say one thing, there's just one more thing I'm going to ask you. What would that thing be? 
There's one more thing that's in your heart that is in the way between me and you. There's one more thing inside your heart that is separating you from eternal life. What is that thing? For this man, it was his riches. And he's obeying the commandments and everything looks good on the outside, but I like my nice things. I like my possessions. I like my white picket fence. I like my fancy car. I like my... There's nothing wrong with these things. God's blessed me. You're right, there is nothing wrong with these things. But if any of these things comes before me, if Christ is saying if anything comes before God, it has to go. It has to go. And last week we said unless one takes up his cross and follows me, he's not worthy of me. So Christ is saying we need to begin to unleash those things of the world that are separating us from God. And that's why the church has chosen this gospel. In the beginning of the fast, and before the month of Kiyah, in order for us to say, we want Jesus. We want Jesus. You're good at making sure that the food is siami? Great. It's fasting food? Perfect. No dairy products? You're very good at that? Bravo, Ali. But there's something in your heart. Who cares about the food? Even... Like, food is not evil in itself. Eating food is not what's going to... Or not eating food is not what's going to save you or not save you. It's what's in the heart. And I began to think that maybe on the outside, even if I looked like the rich young ruler, Jesus is looking to me and saying, Abuna Paul, you have one, one thing. One thing you lack. Can you give it up? How many of us are thinking anything but that, Lord? Like... I'll, I'll tithe more, I'll give more, I'll serve more, I will fast better, I will do. But this one thing, like, leave me something. Christ says, anything that comes before me, to the point where he tells the disciples how hard it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. How hard it is for somebody that finds joys in the things of the world and finds things easy, it's going to be so difficult to give it up. And that's where it's also dangerous. Because a lot of us want to have things like comfortable and easy, and we'll do things on the outside that make us feel good about ourselves. But Christ looks at the heart, and He says, it is difficult. It is difficult for a rich man. You know why? Because a rich man can get very comfortable and attached to things. I remember living, like when we moved to Africa, to live like a poor person, with poor people, it's not a very hard thing to do. To live like a poor person in the midst of rich people is a very difficult thing to do. Like after we had come back and lived with our, you know, community and our friends and our church, it wasn't easy to have the same mindset of that simple life. And I began to realize that there's things in the heart. Yeah, for, for a year I can live in a certain way among the poor. Poor among the poor isn't hard. Poor among the rich is very difficult. It's very difficult. We were trying to make sacrifices when we came back and tried to figure out. It was really, really hard. And we started to realize that there's things in our heart that need to go. These things are tying us to the world. You see, this man, it says, he was sad at this word and went away grieved for he had great possessions. I wonder if he understood what was on the other side of the story. What was behind door number three. If he would just give up his possessions. If he would give to the poor, take up his cross and follow Jesus. What was the prize after that? I think for him, he didn't know the full story. He may have looked and said, okay, now I'm going to suffer and give away my possessions and the cross. Maybe it's not worth it. He didn't understand what was on the other side of that life. He didn't understand the fullness and the abundance of that life. I wonder if we were to ask the apostles, what do you say, guys? Would you, would you do it again? What would St. Peter say? What would St. Peter say? Are you kidding me? Do you know that I walked on water before? You didn't tell me some possessions. I walked on water. Do you know that I raised a dead person with my prayers? Do you know that one of my sermons changed 3,000 people? 
You're going to tell me some possessions? You're going to tell me a relationship? You're going to tell me something that I'm holding on to? That's nonsense. Talk to anyone, even St. Paul. You say St. Paul resembles this rich young ruler because St. Paul, he was perfect in the law. He says, when it came to the law, I was righteous. I was a Pharisee among the Pharisees. And he went down his list of all the great outside achievements and he says, but I consider these things rubbish. These things are rubbish for the excellence of knowing him. I think when we look at the fast, we look at like the food and the sacrifices and the this and the that, but we're not looking at what's on the other side of it. I'm leaving these for something much greater. It's not, I think the fast sometimes can be painful when you're thinking about, okay, no food and no this and no that and stop watching TV and stop doing this. And all of a sudden I'm making all these rules for myself. It's not about rules. Christ is saying, give up something much more like it, it's petty compared to what I want to give you. But I cannot give you as long as you're holding on to the petty things of the world. If you want Christ, if you're really fasting for Christ this season, and you're saying, I want Jesus to be formed in me, that he would be formed in me, that he would be resembled in me, that people would see him in me. If Jesus will be formed, I have to make sure that the world is not in me. Today, Christ is saying one thing you lack. What is that one thing? Maybe it's money. I'm going to be frank, okay? We're going through a moving mountains campaign, and we're trying to raise money. And some people, when they hear the numbers, they're overwhelmed. We're not asking people to do anything more than what's their God-given requirement, to pay their tithe. We have 1,300 households in this church, of which 150 are paying their full tithe. I'm going to say it as clear as it is. Money is the one thing that you are holding on to. Why? How is it that we have 1,200 families that are not paying their full tithe? What is missing from the church? Is the church not giving them? Is the church not serving them? Is Christ not pouring out His love and His life and His devotion and His blessings and His grace and His protection and putting you around so many blessings? You say, but Abuna, you don't know my situation. It doesn't matter what your situation is. There's one thing you lack. Maybe it's your tithe. Maybe God is saying, this possession is going to hinder you. This love of security, you don't think the rich young ruler wanted security? Of course he wanted security. He says, go sell all your possessions. Give to the poor. He didn't say, pay your tithe. He said, go sell all your possessions. Meaning, come be poor with me. Of course it was hard. It was a really high standard. But there's something that Christ is telling us and He's saying, one thing you love more than me. You love yourself. You love your comfort. You love your relationships. You love your money. You love your possessions. You love this. You love that. You love this habit. You love these places. You love these things more than me. If you want an eternal life, Give up this. He didn't say, what can I do to become a saint? He said, what can I do to have eternal life? Anybody in here don't want that goal? Okay, maybe some people don't want to be saints, but we're not here to be saints. We're here to be what? We want eternal life. And he says, you want eternal life? Obey the commandments. And if you've done all those, make sure that you have nothing in your heart more than me. If you've done all those, which is, not easy. But if you've done all those, make sure you have nothing in your heart more than me. Today on this altar, before you come and partake of this sacrifice, you need to offer a sacrifice too. You need to lay your life down on this altar. The altar of Philopatir Mercurios at St. Mark's DC on Sunday morning, December, whatever today is, 7th. You need to come and you need to say, today I'm offering myself on this altar. So that I can receive what? What was God's promise? Jesus says, Assuredly, I say to you, 
There is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time. A hundredfold now. Eternal life is going to come. That's going to come. But now the experience and the abundance of an experience with Christ is not going to compare to the foolishness that you're leaving behind. Think about that thing that you're warring with. That's where you dedicate your fast. And that's where you say, all right, Lord, I want to pay the price. I'm ready to pay the price because I love you and I want eternal life. And I want to be wholeheartedly devoted to you. <laughs> when the disciples heard what Jesus said, they said, Lord, who then can be saved? Like, no one's going to be saved. He says, you're right. With men, it is impossible. Today, if I ask you, tell me about the spiritual life. What's the spiritual life like? You say, Ibn, it's easy. You pray, you read the Bible, you go to church, you take communion, you confess. Perfect. Give a little bit to the poor, pay your tithe. Good to go. Christ says, you're, no, it's impossible. He says, I agree. It's impossible with men. But with God, all things are possible. The spiritual life is impossible. Eternal life is impossible. Which is why we fast. We say, okay God, I'm not counting on anything of my own. I'm not relying on my own strength. I'm not relying on my own food or my own things or my own whatever. I'm relying on you. I'm relying on you. I'm pouring out my heart before you God and saying, I can't do it without you. I'm desperate for you. And that's what the fast is. It's saying, I don't care about myself. I don't care about the world. I need you. With men, it is impossible. All that we're doing here, this is impossible. What we're trying to do is impossible. Unless we come and we say, Lord, I have nothing but you. You're the only one that can save me. I need you. And I want not just to sacrifice. That's not the goal. I want Jesus himself. I want him in me. I want the power of Christ to live in me. I want the glory of Christ to be experienced every day. I want to taste His sweetness. I want His words to be flowing off of my mouth. I want to love the whole world like He asked me to do. I want to shine like the light. But I can't. And so I'm asking Him to work in me. I pray that in this fast, we would be able to answer that one call that Christ is saying, one thing you lack. There's one thing that you love more than me. Can you give it up? Can you devote that to me and give your life and energy and devotion to me and then see what I'm going to do for your life? And again, look around. Ask any of these people. Ask any of these people who have lived that life. They would never change their life for one second. They wouldn't have made one different decision. If you could tell them to rewind and erase parts of your life and decisions that you made, they wouldn't erase it. They would have started it much younger, much earlier. They would have said, I lost years of my life, maybe not, not devoting everything to him. I pray that we would understand what is the glory in Jesus. That these things that are petty would be a foolish price to pay for the glory of Christ. And glory be to God forever. Amen.